I mean, I would say if you're going to engage something like a trance, basically God puts you into a trance. I think there are techniques where you can create a trance like state. I would not advise doing that because uh -huh. I think you can um, create a state by opening your mind and then essentially who knows what's going to engage your mind. Whereas if you engage with God and you focus on him and you focus on engaging in a place of rest, uh -huh. then whatever he does, he does. Uh -huh. you know, and, and that's okay. We can activate our imagination as a portal by using a, a Bible scripture or a, a previous experience. And that can be activate the uh, the doorway into something but then you go through the doorway and you have whatever happens and you don't want to determine what that is you really want that to be something that god leads you in mm. other than when you're in a position where you live in those realms and you can go anywhere you've been before and then live that way um, a trance like state really is when you're completely unaware of your physical surroundings and it's you're not sure whether you're in the body out of the body that type of thing and there are obviously biblical trances. Peter fell into a trance and oh. it changed the whole course of history when the Gentiles were accepted, um, even though they should have really known that, but they didn't. Um, so I, I wouldn't encourage you to, to try and set an agenda with something. Oh, Just okay. Desire to engage with God and, and, wait there in that place by thinking about God talking to him asking him to show you something or open a door for you um, until you can do it yourself at will whenever you want to really I mean that that's when you get to the point where you live that way then essentially I can be anywhere I want anywhere anytime I want Aww. but there's no point doing that if there's not a purpose to it you know it isn't sort of like a heavenly joy joy ride that you just go around and there's, you know, if I'm going to engage with God, I want re just relationship. And then he sets the agenda. If I'm going to go do something in responsibility, if I'm going to go to my throne, then I'm going with a mandate that he's given me. So either way, it comes from the heart of God. Okay. So engaging the heart of God is, is the really the, the primary thing that we should be looking to do. And Jesus only did what he saw the father doing because he knew the father's heart. The more time we spend in the Father's heart with the Father in relationship, the easier it is to discern what we should be out working on a daily basis. And, you know, most of the time, I don't, I don't want an agenda with God, which is mine. Some people have, an, well, I need to be healed. I need to be this. I need that. And we go oh. to God with a shopping list of what we want from him rather than I just want to go and be in his presence. And he knows what I need. You know, and he, I trust him to meet my needs in that relationship. So, yeah, I, trances, you know, are good if God introduces you to it, but not good, I don't think, if you try and create something like that. That's true. Um, and you can desire that God would take you into mm. a state of engaging him like that. Mm. Um, but you shouldn't try and initiate it yeah. by making it happen. I got that. I think that's the key. I don't think anywhere in the Bible you find anyone went into a trance deliberately because they wanted to. It yeah. was because God took them into it. And, you know, I've had a number of those experiences. Um, but I now, you know, generally speaking, I don't function that way because I don't need to because I'm living this way. Um, but occasionally God will take me into something where I become so focused on what he's showing me that I Wonderful. completely just caught up with that. And you, and people would call that a different thing, a rapture an ecstasy, yes, you know, yes. there are different names to it. And yeah, they are beautiful experiences, you know, but most of the time you can't live that way. You can't live in a trance, you know, you've got to function here. Um, so it is usually special occasion type things rather than the way you live every day. Okay. You know, Jesus didn't live in a trance. He walked around talking to people mm -hmm. and ministering to people and doing that. Sure. You know? And there isn't any, I mean, you could say the transfiguration experience was quite an out of the ordinary. And he did go and spend time with God early in the morning or all night when he was seeking for direction. And we don't know exactly what happened in that state. Oh. But I know from John three thirteen 
that Jesus's spirit was engaging in that realm with the father all the time, mm. dwelling in both realms. So he, mm. he was already dwelling in two realms. We tend to need to develop that and learn how to dwell in two realms mm. and going into one realm, whether it be in a trance or an experience helps us then with the next step of learning to stay there. Mm. And you can stay there in the spirit, but you can't stay there spirit and soul because you would be completely unable to function here. So my spirit is in heaven now. And if I was driving down the road, my spirit would still be in heaven and I'm still communicating and connecting, mm -hmm. but I'm aware of the road. I'm not, you know, all of a sudden I'm, my eyes are closed and I'm in some trance and the car's driving itself. That's just, you know, not yes, the way it works. 